Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video is going to cover nuclear tech mod updates and changes from the past one and a half to two months, and mainly it's going to focus on the inertial confinement fusion reactor. This big multi block structure right here and setting it up with all of the heat exchangers. Along with that, we'll also cover some medium pylons, recipe changes, and some nuclear action to go with it. So, without any further ado, let's get straight into this video. Starting with the Inertial Confinement Fusion Reactor or the ICF Reactor. Now this is a big multi-block structure and it takes in lasers from both the sides along with fuel pellets and it generates heat which is removed from it using coolers. It is by far the coolest looking reactor that we have in nuclear tech mod and if we take a look at the GUI here, so right now it's offline because we have no laser input, liquid sodium is our coolant, fuel pellets go in the top, come out of the bottom and it also produces something called the stellar flux. Now as it is a work in progress right now, we don't have any crafting recipes. Now to make the lasers, we have all of these different components here. I am not going to use the turbocharger. So to start making the laser, we place down the laser controller and just like the PWR, right clicking this block will assemble the laser finally. So behind the laser controller, we can stack laser cells, as many as you like, the minimum is one, you can stack more. So here I am going to go with three cells and at the very end, placing down a port to input energy into this laser. Surrounding this with the flash tubes and then we will surround the entire flash tube system with laser capacitors. So building this is kind of like building a pressurized water reactor, sort of. It has same similar blocks like for example now to cover this whole thing we are going to use laser casing and in case if you miss any and you click on the controller, it will tell you where the blocks are missing. So that's pretty good. And once every open block is covered on the bottom and on the sides, right clicking the controller will assemble this laser. So right now this will take 15 mega HG per tick, which is 300 mega HG per second. And uh, if I start supplying it with power, as you can see, 300 mega HG per second, this laser now is active and it is basically powering the ICF reactor. So it is online right now. If we had coolant, then it would start cycling by now. So I'm going to make a similar laser on the other side with three cells. And with both of these running, we will consume what? 600 mega HG per second. So yeah, now I don't know if this is the most efficient way to build this. I was just testing this reactor and this is what I came up with. In the future, if this changes, then yeah, I will cover it. Anyways, so 600 mega cheese per second, all of that is converted to heat, which we can see on the gauge down below. And now in order to measure the amount of coolant that or the heat exchangers that we are going to need, I'm going to use an infinite coolant cycle. So on one side will be a tank with infinite barrel of liquid sodium. On the other side will be a tank of hot liquid sodium. So yeah, 2.5 mega uh, thermal units, which will give us a circulation rate of 18,744 millibuckets per tank. Now the heat exchanger rate went up basically. So now a heat exchanger can process up to 24,000 millibuckets per tank. So if we were to run the ICF reactor without any fuel in it, then it would give us what 126, which is way less than what we are giving into the reactor, which is 600. So without the fuel, the whole setup is very inefficient. But once I put the fuel pellets in, that is when the magic happens. So now that uh, the fuel is in, it is going to start depleting. But the circulation rate or the heat generation is going to go up like anything. So Basically, uh, 168,000 millibuckets per tick now. And uh, yeah, the fuel will deplete really, really fast. And we are also going to produce stellar flux. And now in order to calculate the amount of heat exchangers needed, we take the maximum uh, circulation rate divided by 24,000 because that's the maximum rate of a single heat exchanger, which will give us 7.02. So we need technically eight heat exchangers to make a closed loop. And uh, yeah, setting up eight of the heat exchangers with boilers. And once all of that is done, we can produce power from this reactor. 
so there goes our entire system is online now and we are getting 1.14 giga h per second and this is with the 85 percent efficiency so yeah uh, if you are using normal turbines then we would get 1.3 giga h per second and hopper can be used to get fuel in and out and also use magnetic barrels in order to store the stellar flux because it is antimatter if you use normal tanks it will explode so those were some of the uses of the ports now coming to pylons the medium sized pylons there are four variants the normal wooden variant and the wooden variant with the transformer now the ones with the transformer can connect to a storage block or cable so the normal ones can only transfer power on lines and the transformer ones can actually connect so here's an example i'm going to get the output of this turbine into a wooden pylon with transformer into a normal steel pylon and uh, connecting them both with the cable drum and now for the output another steel pylon with transformer and placing down the storage block here we'll start getting power in the storage block like this also these can be branched off like the other pylons that we have like this and also using dyes you can color code half of the wires so basically all the wires connected to that pylon will change to the color of the dye that you use on the pylon next up voiding antimatter or fluids which have the antimatter trait on them is going to result in a big explosion from the drainage pipe so yeah this can be used kind of as a makeshift bomb so here i am going to use stellar flux which we are getting from the icf reactor and there goes so yeah uh, looks like the villagers are having fun and voiding these items with the drainage pipe is not a good idea next up nuclear explosions are much cooler now especially the shock waves so as you saw uh, the screen shake is more intense but it lasts for a smaller amount of time and uh, yeah as the shock wave hits so does the gui shake and your screen shake so basically these two th things are synced now there so in the first example i was standing near the explosion in the second one i was far away so you could see the shock wave coming to me and as the shock wave hit me then the screen and the gui started shaking so yeah nuclear bombs are pretty cool now and as for bail fire now bail fire spread has been reduced i think it uh, no longer spreads infinitely and the further away it gets the darker it becomes so yeah that's a good thing for lack coming up next we have the seeding slurry now seeding slurry can be used with the chem thrower and wherever you have dead grass from all of the nuclear shenanigans uh, you can spread seeding slurry on it to get normal grass like this so this is a village i nuked before it had so much dead grass and spraying seeding slurry on it will convert it into normal grass and it can be made by liquefacting the seeds wines grass etc so that is how seeding slurry is made also diamonds can be crucible into carbon now same goes for emeralds emeralds will give beryllium oh and also emeralds have a bedrock ore variant now same weight as iron bismuth bronze can be made using eight pieces of copper one bismuth and three flux and bismuth bronze can be used to make the tier 5 anvil it can be converted into basically ingots like this and these ingots can then be used to make a tier 5 and will instead of using 10 ingots of bismuth same goes for arsenic bronze and arsenic by the way can now be made using 16 oily scraps and arsenic bronze can be used in the same way as the bismuth bronze uranium by the way when processed now either directly in a centrifuge or in an ore acidizer then centrifuge will give neptunium also instead of plutonium meteorite loot has been changed so you will get uh, the basic things or useful early game things as the description says like the enhanced circuits gold uh, some clifford eggs armor modifications etc 
And for some recipe changes, the condenser now uses cash plates, substations give two of them for the same recipe, tritium lamps are cheaper, coconut naphtha can be reformed, and so goes the heating oil. And finally, you can use latex with sour gas in an acidizer to obtain rubber. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, peace out and stay safe.